In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know how to play Yaelon efficiently, which artifacts, weapons and teams you can build with her, as well as include multiple showcases, so you can see for yourself just how strong Yaelon can be when you build her properly. So the first thing I want to talk about is Yaelon's talents, her playstyle, and the best value that she can get out of this character. Her entire kit is honestly not that hard to understand, because she's similar to Xing Cho. Well, at least her burst is. So when you activate her burst, a small dice will appear near your active character, and with each normal attack, it will launch a coordinated attack, which will be three separate hits. You can also trigger this burst attack by using Yaelon's elemental skill when it damages the enemies. This is basically her main method of applying Hydro, so the burst is not only important for dealing a lot of damage, damage, but it also helps other characters cause reactions. Also, activating the burst deals initial damage in a wide area, which can further help with applying more hydro to surrounding enemies. Now, the skill on the other hand is really interesting. It has a pressed version where she makes a small dash and marks nearby enemies for explosive hydro damage, or if you hold down the button, she gains really fast movement and you can run around and tag a bunch of enemies. You can prematurely exit this mode by dashing, jumping, or pressing the skill again. However, since dashing consumes stamina, unless you need to dodge, it's better to jump cancel or press the skill again. By now, you've probably noticed that the skill deals considerable amount of damage. It's actually one of the better scaling skills in the entire game, and I highly recommend you vaporize it if you have the chance to do it. Also, it's not much, but she also pulls some of the smaller enemies closer to her, so this can help you with repositioning them. Finally, she also has a special charge attack called Breakthrough Barb, but she only gains it after spending 5 seconds out of combat, or there's also a 34% chance it will reset when you mark each opponent with her skill. So the more enemies you tag, the greater the chance to reset it. This shot can be charged up really fast and explodes for a decent amount of damage, but it's nothing amazing and I wouldn't say you're missing out too much if you forget to use it, and in fact, I would actually consider it to be more important as a way to apply hydro on enemies. If her burst is still on cooldown or not fully charged up, you will know when this shot is ready by looking at her bracelet which starts to glow, but in the middle of combat that's hard to see, so there's also this symbol that shows up above her head if you successfully reset it during combat. Now what's cool about Yaelon is that all all of these talents I've mentioned all scale with her maximum health. Attack is completely useless for her, and I'll talk a lot more about this in her artifacts and weapons section, but for now, just keep in mind that not only does she deal a lot of damage, but she's also a very tanky unit, so you can use her to absorb incoming damage if you're running low on health with other characters. Now, she does have a passive talent that boosts her maximum health, depending on how many different elements you have in the team, but I wouldn't focus too much on it. Normally, this will be either 12 or 18%, and I do not recommend to specifically build teams just to achieve the 30% boost, but I'll talk about this more in her team building section. Finally, the last and really important thing is her passive talent called Adapt with Ease. Basically, after you activate her burst and until it lasts, every one second, the character will gain 3.5% damage increase, up to a maximum of 50%. That's quite a lot, but this buff only works on the active character, and more importantly, it ignores any snapshotting, so this damage buff will always apply immediately if you switch to the next character. Uh, for example, Xiangling uses her Pyronado, then Yelan's burst is activated, and after you switch back to Xiangling, her Pyronado will still deal more damage after each second passes. Oh, and if we're on the same topic, her elemental skill will snapshot, but there's barely anyone who can buff her due to her unique HP scaling nature. However, I've tested this with Kazuha's elemental damage boost, and she can retain the buff when it ends in her hold mode. As for the burst, no, it does not snapshot, which is what you would expect since this is the same situation with Xing Cho's burst. Anyway, that's pretty much her playstyle. Use her skill whenever you can, which becomes even more valuable in vaporized teams, while the burst is going to be her main method of helping the team with damage and hydro application. In terms of talent priority, focus on raising the burst at least to level 8, then level up her skill, and for the normal attack, which has the breakthrough barb, I only recommend it as the last thing when you have a lot of resources, because the damage isn't that valuable enough. Worst case scenario, get it to level 6. So, unlike every other character in the game, building Yaelon is a little bit different than usual. You see, all of her damage besides normal attacks scale with maximum health, which means attack is completely useless for her, and this is going to play a major role when it comes to deciding on her weapons. Instead, what you want to consider when choosing a weapon for her is the substat and the passive it provides. The base attack can be ignored and serves no purpose. Now, since Yaelon's burst cost is 70, you will first want to make sure she gets enough energy recharge, so that you can activate the burst off cooldown and 
And luckily, one of her best weapons is going to be the Favonius Warbow. This is a free-to-play weapon that you can obtain by finishing a story quest, and even at first refinement, it will be used as a base comparison to all the other options. Now what I love about Favonius Bow is that not only it offers a huge 61% energy recharge from its substat, but the passive also helps out not just her, but also her teammates with gaining energy. I actually believe that you only need a couple of more ER substats from artifacts, and you're good to go with Yelon in almost any team comp. Of course, I'll talk about more how this can change when building a team with her. So if Favonius Bow is her best free-to-play option, then you can probably guess her best in slot bow in general is going to be Aqua Simulacra. This is an absolutely busted stat stick with a massive critical damage substat and a powerful passive, and without much optimization, it can outperform Favonius Bow by 20-25% to on average, but you can probably go even higher. However, the key difference between the two is that it's almost unavoidable you'll need to use Sans with energy recharge if you equip Aqua Simulacra on her, or for this matter, any bow that you equip without energy recharge is going to require this solution. Now the next bow that's really powerful is Elegy for the End. It offers a good amount of energy recharge from its substat, although you'll probably want to obtain more of it from artifact substats, and the passive itself is really amazing in a lot of team comps, especially if you consider running her with Hu Tao, Yoimiya, or basically any other team that wants to do more damage in general. So I would consider these three bows as your main options. Elegy for boosting teams, Aqua Simulacra for amazing personal damage, and Favonius as a free-to-play solution. As for the rest of the bows, well, there's plenty of them to choose from, and they all vary slightly from each other. However, Sacrificial Bow after third refinement is a really solid choice if you want to trigger her skill two times in a row and gain more particles. There's also the limited Fading Twilight. It's pretty good, but the ER from Substat is really low, so you might even need to get Energy Recharge Sands along with it. Otherwise, the other realm relevant 4-star picks would be Moon's Moon, but only strictly useful if you have a team of 80 plus energy cost users, since it's only the passive you're gonna be benefiting from, while Viridescent Hunt from the Battle Pass offers decent amount of crit rate and an unacceptable crowd control alternative if you need one. Finally, Stringless with each additional refinement can increase her burst and skill damage, while the elemental mastery from it can help with Vaporize and Taser Comp damage. But what's really surprising is that you can also just go for either Recurve Bow or Slingshot. Both of these are three-star options and are just there to mainly either boost her health or critical rate, whichever you're missing out on. So if someone else in your account is using Favonius Bow, these choices are really good for her. In fact, you can even go with a Raven Bow to boost her Hydro and Reaction damage. Finally, if you're wondering, what about the rest of the five-star options? Well, there's Polar Star that probably will fix all of your problems with not enough critical rate, although it could also become a bit of an overkill if you end up with too much of it, but at least the passive itself can increase both her skill and burst damage. I would say this bow is really for those who are absolutely unlucky with critical rate substats. Oh, and the last 5 stars would be Skyward Harp and Thundering Pulse. I would say Thundering is a bit better here, but again, it heavily depends on what stats you have, and ironically enough, Recurve Bow actually ends up on about the same power level as both of these options, if you can manage to obtain enough critical rate and damage from artifacts. But yeah, as you can see, there's lots of weapons to go for, and I've made this personal weapon priority recommendation myself, although keep in mind it's impossible for me to give a reliable suggestion without knowing what artifacts your Yelan has. However, I believe things will become much more clear when we talk about her artifact stats next. Now, when it comes to artifacts and Yelan's stats you want to aim for, the most important thing you first need to accomplish is by getting enough energy recharge. The ideal amount depends on the weapon, however, there's really two exceptions here. And the first one would be if you have Favonius Warbow, then 180% is a good stopping point, but going below or above it won't hurt too much. If you're using Sacrificial Bow and catching all of the Hydro Particles with her, then I'd say about 160% to 170% is acceptable. Otherwise, with any other weapon, even if it has energy recharge, you probably want to get as close as to 200% as possible and going above it is not a problem. But keep in mind that these numbers will differ to some extent, depending if you have another teammate with a Favonius weapon, which helps reduce her energy recharge needs, or if there's another Hydro teammate like Xingqiu or Ayato in the team, which again, means you can aim for a lower than the recommended ERs I've suggested. Now with that being said, the next thing I want to talk about are the artifact main stats. Since all of Yelan's damage scales with health, there's actually a lot of flexibility when it comes to deciding on the main stat. 
For Sans, if you're not using a bow with Energy Recharge, then you will definitely want to get Energy Recharge Sans. It's pretty simple, honestly, since I highly doubt you'll be able to get to my suggested ER values with substats alone. Otherwise, if you're using an Energy Recharge bow, then hands down, the best choice is going to be Health Sans. No questions asked. Now, for the Goblet, Hydro Damage Bonus is preferred here, because if you overinvest too much into health, you will start to see some diminishing returns in damage. But if it just so happens that you do have a Goblet with Health Main Stat and valuable substats like Critical Damage and Energy Recharge, then maybe it's worth it, but honestly, the majority of builds I've tested makes Hydro Damage better. Finally, the circlet can either be critical damage, raid, or health. If you're running energy recharge sands, then health circlet becomes really good for Yelan, since you're not overinvesting too much, but on the other hand, if it's sands with health, well, then again, as I mentioned before, critical damage can be a bit better most of the time, but I would still say both of the options are viable. Point is, health on circlet is really good for Yelan. However, the irony here is that we're talking about a scenario when you have enough critical rate from substats, even when Yelan's ascension stat is crit rate as well. In fact, all of my showcases are actually using critical rate circlet with a fat critical damage substat because I wanted to get at least 60-70% to of critical rate on her in order to achieve better and more consistent damage. But that's pretty much it. The rest of the stuff like substat priority is pretty much self-explanatory. Get enough energy recharge, enough critical rate, and then both critical damage and health will be your go-to substats you want to focus on. Moving over to artifact sets, there's really not that many to talk about. Her best and slot for personal damage is going to be Emblem Force Set, which only gets better if you have a bow with energy recharge, increasing overall burst damage. The next best option, if you cannot obtain Emblem, would be to get a mix of two sets, which can be either be Noblesse, Tenacity, or Heart of Depth. Finally, if you're ready to sacrifice some of Yelan's personal damage and nobody else in the team is using it, then she's decent for the Noblesse Force Set. Just keep in mind the attack buff for her is useless. Oh, and if you're wondering, no, I do not recommend building her with Exiles or Instructors, unless you're in early to mid game, since you're gonna be missing out on a big chunk of stats that you could otherwise get from 5 star artifacts. But that's pretty much it. Yelan's weapon and artifact choices are kind of unique, since all of the health stats we used to consider trash have now become Yelan's treasure, and I recommend to just first achieve her optimal ER and critical rate values, then just hope you get lucky with substat rolls on health or critical damage. Yelan is one of those characters that you can basically add into any team comp and she's going to be fine, since due to her unique HP scaling nature, she can't really benefit from attack buffs and this simplifies team building, while at the same time, she by herself has a powerful passive talent that boosts the active character's damage. Also, since I talked so much about her energy recharge, I recommend to do her skill, then burst, so she can catch the particles mid-animation, but this can sometimes change depending on team's overall energy generation. Now with that being being said, here's a few free to play and meta team comps that I believe she's going to be really good at. First one would be Taser Comp. The free to play variation would be Fischl, Beto, and Sucrose, who will be the team's driver, meaning she's going to be use her normal attacks to trigger both Beto's and Yelan's bursts. The downside here is that Yelan's passive talent, which buffs active characters' damage, will be underutilized by Sucrose, since the majority of her damage is from transformative reactions she causes, and they do not get buffed by Yelan's passive talent. Also, since there's no healer in the team, if you're having trouble staying alive, I recommend equipping Sucrose with Prototype Amber. Now, the next team would be Freeze. There's really a lot of freedom when it comes to building a good Freeze team, but as a general rule, you want two Cryo units, one Animo, and of course, one Hydro. An example team I'm using here would be Ayaka, Rosaria, Yelan, and Kazuha, but you can just swap in and swap out different units. And the most important thing here would be to make sure Yelan can consistently apply Hydro from her entire kit, meaning even using her special charge shot can help with freezing enemies if her burst or skill are not ready yet. Now, there's also National, which is made up of Benny, Shangling, and either Kazuha or Sucrose. And one thing to keep in mind here is that Yelan won't be consistently vaping Shangling's Pyronado. That's something you're gonna have to accept, but nonetheless, it's still a really powerful team comp that you can use and abuse in the Abyss or any other challenging content. But since I'm already talking about vaporizing stuff, I think it's about time to look at some of the Pyro units and how well they work with Yelan. If we compare it to 
Shing Cho, the coordinated attacks have slower speed, and their accuracy is harder to land, so this means you'll need to be pretty precise before you start swinging with your normal attacks. But what do I mean by this? Well, take for example Hu Tao's VV Shred Team Comp. You start the rotation by using Yelan's skill in burst, switch to Pyro unit, then to an Animo unit to swirl on top of Pyro, and then finally go to Hu Tao, who is now ready to vape her charge attacks. Out of many times I tried this rotation, I've got mixed results. Sometimes I could vape for almost the entire duration, getting satisfying 100,000 crits, so while you can do it, it's not super consistent. This is a bit less forgiving when using Yelan together with Yoimiya, it's easier to achieve the vapes, but you still need to be mindful about her Hydro application. Oh, and regarding the popular Double Geo Hu Tao team comp, it sadly doesn't allow Hu Tao to vaporize her attacks for the whole duration. Because while you can start off with successful vapes, if the Geo constructs are resonating near the target, it will slowly chip away the Hydro Aura and it will get replaced with Hu Tao's Pyro application. So, to simplify what I'm trying to say here, you can vaporize off of Yelan's burst attacks, but don't expect it to be consistent enough. However, this is where Xing Cho comes into play. By combining both Yelan and the Book Nerd, you actually can easily vape the attacks, deliver a ton of damage, and this works amazingly well on any pyro damage dealer like Hu Tao, Yoimiya, or Diluc. And in fact, I would say that for Hu Tao, this is a pretty amazing addition when using both Xing Cho and Yelan, since now you can fill the last pot with someone like Zhang Li to get shielding, or maybe add Fischl to cause some nice over vape damage, or even just go for an animal unit like Kazuha to boost hydro damage. In fact, if you add Xiongling as the last unit, this team comp performs surprisingly well. So again, there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to this new Yelan and Xing Cho combo. So yeah, this new Hu Tao double hydro team comp is probably the newest thing that's gonna become relevant in the game's meta. Not only can you reduce Xing Cho's and Yelan's energy requirement needs by a lot, but if your book nerd is still using Sacrificial Sword, well, you can now replace it with something like Jade Cutter or any high damage sword. Overall, I'm really happy with how Yelan turned out to be. She's got a really fun playstyle, especially when you can run around like a ninja, tie up your enemies, and watch some satisfying damage numbers come out. I haven't really talked about her constellations, but I do not believe you need any of them in order to enjoy using her, although I am considering to make a full constellation review video, so let me know in the comments if you'd be interested to see it. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you found this guide to be useful, and I hope to see you next time. Or maybe again in this video when you come back to watch it.